All right, everyone. Good morning. We're going to go ahead and get started with our webinar. Um, the focus today is really connecting accounting and operations. And uh, my name is Josh Cheney. I'm a senior manager of strategic alliances here at Autodesk. Uh, Michael Newland, director of product management from HH2, is also going to be joining me to discuss uh, our recent release of our integration connecting Autodesk Construction Cloud's cost management module to Sage 300 CRE. Um, and I can tell you that this has been an ongoing struggle connecting operations and accounting back the days when I was at Viewpoint Construction Software to my days in the field at ISEC Incorporated. And it continues to be something that our industry tries to tackle. All right, so before we get started, um, as usual, we like to include a safe harbor statement at the beginning of these presentations to make sure that everyone's aware that some of the features and enhancements that we're gonna be discussing today uh, are forward-looking. So uh, please be aware, um, but also please reach out if you, if you have questions about what you see today. Um, and that takes me to just a couple housekeeping key items before we get started. So um, if you're an attendee, uh, your line is going to be muted uh, just to cut down on kids yelling in the background or dogs barking um, and make sure that you know we keep the session focused on what's being discussed if you do have a question there is a question box please submit it into the question uh, box inside of um, go to webinar and we'll either address your questions live or we'll reach out to you after the webinar to make sure we get your answer your questions answered uh, and then lastly, a link to the recorded session will be emailed out to all registrants. Uh, and in that email, we'll also include a couple links out to uh, some of the resources that we're going to discuss at the end of the presentation. All right. So again, thanks for joining us. Uh, my name is Josh Cheney. Um, I help oversee our ecosystem of integration partnerships here for Autodesk Construction Cloud. And again, I'm joined by Michael Newland, who has really a storied history uh, in the construction technology space, uh, both at Event One, where uh, Michael was instrumental in connecting project management and accounting systems, and now maybe even more so working at HH2 as their director of product management. And, you know, he's kind of been the brains and face of this integration from HH2's half um, and really connecting our cost management solution to Sage 300 CRE. All right, so just a brief agenda. Uh, I'm going to run through Autodesk Build, uh, give you a little bit of background on the solution. Uh, we'll cover some of the capabilities and workflows that Autodesk Build cost management module can handle. Uh, and then we're going to hand things over to Michael. And we are going to go, go through uh, the integration, uh, its capabilities, what universal construction model is, uh, and then a demo of the integration. Now, I just want to give you a heads up that the demo has been pre-recorded and really for two reasons. One, we wanna make sure that this is a smooth presentation for you. Uh, and secondly, in the sake of saving time, uh, instead of waiting for a transaction to move between the systems, uh, we cut that out. So really you just kind of see what the end results look like. And then lastly, we'll wrap up with a Q&A session uh, to try to get as many questions answered as possible. And like I mentioned, if we don't get to your question, then we'll reach out to you after today's presentation. All right, awesome. So. Autodesk Build. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know, um, Autodesk Construction Cloud is really comprised of three different main focuses inside of the umbrella uh, of the Autodesk Construction Cloud. And so that's uh, our BIM Collaborate solution, uh, Autodesk Takeoff, which was a, a more recent rollout, and then Autodesk Build. Um, and really, this gives us a great opportunity to connect pre-construction to course of construction and then leverage Autodesk Docs, Insight, and Administration to give you kind of a full rounded out offering of a pre-con and project management solution. Now, today's uh, main focus is gonna be on Autodesk Build, um, Autodesk Docs, and then really the tool that sits underneath that or on top of it, depending on how you look at it, is gonna be our cost management module. Now, we do have dashboards that can be derived from our cost management solution and across the entire platform, and then the administration is going to be really key for adding uh, both internal and external stakeholders and then making sure that those people have the right permissions to access what they need to, but also not get themselves into any trouble. All right. So our cost management solution is 
a bigger part of the Autodesk construction cloud. And the, the construction cloud in and of itself is everything from uh, content management or document management, our cost management tool, of course, and then really what you would expect from really kind of a document control solution. So project management, uh, quality or commissioning, safety, and then also closing out projects. All right, so our focus today is gonna be on cost management and some of the core capabilities in there, including budget management, change orders, making sure that you get paid and uh, your, your trades get paid, and then also trying to do uh, some cash forecasting. All right, so let's jump into some of those features and look at them in more detail. You know, I, I think that this is a, a really great statement around, you know, how a cost management solution can help execute and ultimately determine the financial outcome of our project. The sooner you identify trends or areas of financial risk on your jobs, the sooner you can take action on those and try to rectify scopes of work and make sure that everybody's pointed in the right direction to make the pro project profitable and keep it on schedule, but also importantly, keep it safe for, for everyone on the job site. All right, so if you've got poor cost management going on, these are probably trends that every organization tries to overcome. So, you know, better forecasting uh, and accuracy. So, you know, watching uh, a project manager at the end of a month go together and forecast where they think a job's gonna come in at, uh, both on the cost side and the revenue side, and making sure that um, we're not running into profit fade at the end of a project, um, but maintaining kind of that level of profitability and keeping everybody happy. Uh, tracking cash flow, you know, that's going to be a big part of uh, the integration that we have with Sage and making sure that as transactions are processed over on the Sage side, that those are rolling in as actual cost and we can see those expenses hitting the system. If you don't have reporting, then all the data that you're capturing is really not relevant. Um, you know, this. Uh, can come in the form of, of spreadsheets or other offline reports. I think you'll be pleased with some of the reports that we've put into our cost management modules to try to make life a little bit easier for your end users and your project teams. Um, lastly, capturing non-recoverable costs. You know, those are a headache for anybody. Um, and so we're going to try to mitigate, mitigate those also. All right, centralized and connected cost management. So, you know, clearly you're going to have better cost control. Um, the more data and the more reporting that you can see coming in and out of the application is going to give you that much better insight around how your job's progressing. Um, making sure that uh, workflows uh, and enhanced collaboration takes place. Um, we'll cover this in a little more detail also, but I love some of the features that our product team has put in place, allowing for not just internal collaboration, but also external, both downstream and upstream between trades and owners. Uh, we've improved forecasting. Um, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit more around uh, the scheduling tool that we've also added to the product here recently. Uh, and then lastly, real-time visibility into uh, related costs, risk, and the financial health of, of your product or your organization. All right. So some of the key areas where we have um, specific workflows and then features that support those. So Budget, budget and contract management are really kind of the heart and soul of where all of this begins, right? We, we have an original estimate or a budget. We know what our, our project costs are going to look like and hopefully what the profitability looks like. Uh, being able to issue purchase orders and subcontracts right from your project management solution, that's, that's instrumental um, and, and really kind of rounds out uh, the buyout process. Uh, change management is complementary to that. So anytime there's additional scope changes, maybe unforeseen circumstances popping up on the job, we want to make sure that we can support appending any existing contracts. And then also we want to put a workflow wrapper around that. The payment application process, of course, we want to make sure we keep our trades happy, uh, get them paid in, a, in an appropriate fashion. And then we also want to, of course, be open and communicative with our, with our owners. So the, the ability to connect downstream pay apps and upstream uh, re requisitions or pay apps to the owners, that's going to be a big part. And also making sure that uh, we have work close to support that and the change side is, is going to be vital. Uh, forecasting and dashboards, those are innate inside of our solution. Um, you know, one area where I want to give all of our partners a big shout out is, you know, side by side with your dashboards that are uh, Autodesk Construction Cloud specific, you can also bring in third-party apps that may further your understanding of 
how your project's progressing, uh, the safety on site, and then also uh, additional um, uh, cost cost related activities. And then additionally, uh, supporting functionality. So document templates, making sure that we have financial markups that are applicable to change orders, making sure that the system's collaborative, and then lastly, an open ecosystem. So we're not gonna shy away from an integration. And I would encourage you as an operations team to reach out to your accounting team and, and use the relationship with your accounting system to leverage getting an integration built to Autodesk Construction Cloud's cost management module if one doesn't already exist. All right, so let's hop into a couple areas where we've got um, either new or existing features and highlight some of those capabilities. So what we're looking at here is really the flexibility of the solution to really marry up whatever your cost code structure looks like inside of your ERP to how that project's gonna be uh, represented inside of cost management. Um, you know, we can really expand this out to accommodate, you know, the, the less sophisticated solutions downstream all the way up to the very complex JD Edwards, Oracle, SAP type installations where, you know, you're not just looking at a phase or a cost code, but you're looking at divisions, business units, cost codes, uh, maybe um, uh, sequencing of events, sub jobs and cost types. So a really flexible area inside of the solution. And, and you know, we, uh, we're intentional in putting this in place because we wanted to be flexible enough to marry up to, you know, virtually any ERP that, that, that we have thrown at us. All right, the next area. So not only can we manage subcontracts and purchase orders inside of the solution, but we heard from our customers that they didn't always have in-house expertise to create crystal reports. Uh, or they didn't want to reach out to a professional services organization and get nickel and dime to build out reports that they felt should have been inherent inside of the solution. So we give you standardized reports, we give you templates inside of the, the solution, but we also provide you with the ability to use Microsoft mail merges and pull fields out of the application and insert those into a Word document. So really, we're facilitating the ease of adding your legalese, your uh, boilerplate information, and then also specific fields to really tailor the reports uh, and the documents that are coming out of cost management to really represent how you want those contracts to look and make them the, your make them your organization's own uh, as you're starting to implement and then roll out the solution. Budget payment apps. Um, this is a big one. Now, what we're looking at on the screen here is going to be a payment app that's upstream but we also can facilitate these downstream. And just yesterday, I was on a call with a potential customer that was talking about in 2050, it would be their nirvana to be able to have a, an owner login and see what their pay app looked like inside of their solution. Well, we can do it today. You don't have to wait till 2050. The same, uh, uh, the same capabilities are available downstream with your subs. So you can create and open up a billing period for them. They can come and submit their pay apps to you. And then you can go back and forth around a pencil copy until everybody's happy with where you land in terms of percent complete or units installed. From there, you can generate uh, the pay app inside of our solution. And we're also looking at third party products externally to maybe even further simplify that and generate your G702-703 form. All right, change order workflows. So not only is the ability to capture pending change orders, uh, or potential change orders, subcontract change orders, and owner change orders, but also the ability to generate a request for quote and send those out to your trades and have them come back to you with what an estimated price looks like for your change order. So we're really trying to expedite that process and give you one central location where all of that back and forth negotiation can take place. Additionally, our product team and, and Ian Turner has done a phenomenal job of enabling workflows and approval processes. We have individual workflows or we have group uh, workflows where if somebody's out of the office, another stakeholder can come in and approve a change order so that you're not sitting around waiting for that person to come back from vacation uh, to, to further uh, process your, your project and your buyout. So another great feature there. All right, cash flow forecasting. So one of the last features that we've got here is the ability to spread your project's revenue and costs over the entirety of the job. Uh, a really great feature, 
love the visual represent, representation that our product team has put in place. It really helps you understand you know, what your costs are going to look like over the life cycle of your job. There's a couple different ways that we can look at what these charts uh, display, whether that's uh, by percentage, by period, a cumulative effect, so great features here, um, and really, you know, the intent is to make sure that your project team understands what cash flows look like on your job. All right, so when we pull it all together, really data is still at the center of the story that we're telling here. Um, if you bubble up one, one band outside of data, then our cost management solution really starts to capture all of those different workflows that we just discussed. Then when you get into the band of our unified platform, you really start to see how the other features and tools inside of our application can interact with our unified, uh, between our unified platform and our cost management solution. And then to round it out, all of the great partners and integrations that we have, um, whether they're cost management specific, whether they're with other accounting systems, uh, or whether they're with other third-party applications. And you know whether those are direct integrations, using our, our iPaaS, Autodesk Construction Cloud Connect, or leveraging the great relationships that we have with our third-party system integrators. All right, so with that, I'm gonna turn things over to uh, Michael Newland um, to take us through some of the uh, existing features and the newly released features that um, HH2's delivered, leveraging the universal construction model. To simultaneously manage projects in the field and in the office, construction companies piece together multiple software solutions. These solutions usually include an enterprise resource planning or ERP system, such as Sage 300 Construction and Real Estate, and a project management system, such as Autodesk Construction Cloud. These proprietary solutions create silos around their data. And while the responsibilities for each system differ wildly, there is overlap in the data where both systems use the same data entities. Because there is no communication between each system, changes made to these overlapping entities bring the systems out of sync with one another. Many construction companies react to this issue by manually updating entities in both systems through double entry or exporting from one system and importing into the other. This degrades data integrity and fosters errors while also consuming a lot of time. HH2 Cloud Services Universal Construction Model, or UCM, helps these disparate yet essential software solutions to effectively communicate. Our integration platform tears down these data silos and allows data to flow between systems while establishing the system of record for data entities and managing the direction of the synchronized data flow. Sage CRE and Autodesk Construction Cloud can now work together. How does the universal construction model stand out from other integration products on the market? First, industry experience. HH2 has evolved the UCM to connect siloed systems for almost 18 years. Second, a proven system. Thousands of construction companies rely on the UCM to keep their data current across many ERPs and third-party solutions. Third, a universal format. Sage has a proprietary data structure and methods for accessing and storing the data entities. So the UCM does the heavy lifting in accessing the data and bringing it into a more universal structure in the cloud. Last, a cloud-based solution. The UCM is always on, always available, and auto updates when there are new features released. This substantially reduces the IT experience needed to run the system. The integration between Sage 300 construction and real estate and Autodesk Build consists of three components. The Universal Construction Model, or UCM, is at the heart of the integration. This is the cloud-based platform that manages the integration tasks and data. The HH2 synchronization client is installed on your Sage 300 server and serves as the conduit for data flowing to and from Sage and the UCM. UCM Connect serves as the conduit for data flowing to and from Autodesk Build and the UCM. The result is a robust and scalable cloud-based integration solution that seamlessly connects accounting to project management. The version of this integration that was previously released consists of support for the following data entities. 
companies such as suppliers and subcontractors that are vendors and saved accounts payable, main contract companies that are customers in Sage Accounts Receivable, projects, which are jobs in Sage, budget code segment values that are populated from Sage standard cost codes and standard categories, project budget codes and original budgets that are populated from the Sage job cost code category hierarchy and original estimates, subcontracts and purchase orders which relate to commitments in Sage job cost, and finally, subcontract change orders, which relate to commitment change orders in Sage job cost. Note that the arrows in this illustration indicate the direction that data can flow, either from Sage to Autodesk or Autodesk to Sage, or in some cases, bidirectionally. Features recently released or being released soon include the ability to send subcontracts and purchase orders from Sage to Autodesk, budget changes going from Autodesk to Sage, Coming soon, actual transactional cost data going from Sage to Autodesk, main contracts going from Sage to Autodesk. Also coming soon, main contract changes going from Sage to Autodesk, budget payment applications or owner invoices going from Autodesk to Sage Accounts Receivable, cost payment applications or subcontractor pay apps going from Autodesk to Sage Accounts Payable. Now, let's take a look at the integration in action. I'd like to start this presentation by logging into my HH2 website. Uh, every HH2 customer uh, will have their own unique website that contains all of the HH2 applications and functionality. So I'll go ahead and log in with the credentials that I've been given. And once I'm here, I'll have various applications on the left side, uh, one of them being UCM, which is Universal Construction Model. And within UCM, we'll have uh, UCM Connect, which is what controls the integration between Sage 300 and Autodesk. So I'll click on Cloud Integrations, click on my Autodesk connection. And here is where I'll find uh, various settings that control how that integration works. I'm going to focus right now on this middle tab. And here what I'm seeing is a list of the various different kinds of data or data entities that we can exchange in one direction or the other between Sage and Autodesk. The inbound sync options indicate information coming into Sage, and the outbound sync options indicate data going out from Sage and into Autodesk. You notice that uh, for each one of these data entities, uh, I have options in both columns. So as an example, I could say that I want to have vendors going from Sage into Autodesk. And I have some options here determining whether that's going to be an automatic push of data as data changes, or whether I would need to trigger that manually whenever I want information to be up to date. I also have some options to indicate whether I want all records or selected records only. And if I select the selected records only option, then I would need to go, uh, go into a separate screen and identify which vendor specifically I want to sync over. Notice that you have options in both columns, and, and in most cases, we do support the ability to sync data from one system to the other and vice versa. So you could potentially set it for bidirectional sync or control the workflow based on uh, your company's desired direction of that data. So what I'd like to do next is show an example of each one of these different data entities syncing either from Sage to Autodesk or Autodesk to Sage. To do that, we'll start with AP vendors. So I'm going to uh, first off go ahead and uh, log into Autodesk just so that I make sure I have that already up and ready. You don't actually have to be logged into Autodesk to do this, by the way. Mainly just wanted to show this so that we can see the list of companies prior to syncing data into it. Okay, so here's the list of all of the vendors that I currently have set up in, in Autodesk. And so now I'm going to go ahead and open up Sage Accounts Payable.
we go into setup vendors and we're going to uh, make up a new vendor so I'll find a spot in the list here to add that we'll make it vendor 208 Okay, and that's about as much information as we actually need to um, to set up a vendor in Autodesk. There may be additional fields that you would set up in in Sage that um, that's fine. So once I've added that vendor, the integration is set to run automatically. So that means that the synchronization client that sits on your Sage server is going to pick up that new record automatically and push that up to the HH2 site. Then based on the HH2 settings. Back here, the HH2 site will determine if that record needs to go over to Autodesk, and if so, then it pushes it on over to Autodesk companies. Uh, that synchronization process that pushes the data up from your Sage server is set to run on some frequency that you can determine. It can be set to run hourly, daily, or whatever interval makes sense. Uh, it can also be set to run continuously, which means basically five minute wait times between synchronization processes. Rather than wait for the next scheduled interval of that synchronization client, I can trigger that synchronization manually. So I can simply go back to the, the home page of my HH2 site, click on Accounting Sync, and click on Start Sync. Okay, it looks like that has finished. So now let's go back to the home page. and click on vendors and let's see if our b1 vendor shows up there and sure enough there it is so the b1 builders vendor has been uh, sent from sage up to the hh2 site and due to the settings that we have set in ucm connect that vendor should have already been sent over to autodesk as well so if we click on our Autodesk companies, refresh the page, and sure enough, there is B1 Builders. It's the address and everything that I entered in Sage. Notice that the Sage vendor ID goes up under the ER Partner Company ID field. The prefix of VEN to indicate that it was a vendor from Accounts Payable. So now just to take this full circle, let's assume that we received an address update in Autodesk and I want to apply that update and have that update sent back over to Sage. So I'll click on edit. I'll make the change to the address. In this case, I'm just adding a suite number and click save. So within UCM Connect, because I have my configuration set basically to be bidirectional, Anything I change in Autodesk will be pushed over to Sage. So notice that I have per vendors uh, this set for inbound sync auto. That means inbound to Sage. And so if I if I wait an hour for that to occur, then that will show up in Sage. And that's because right now this is configured to pull things from Autodesk on an hourly basis. If I don't want to wait the full hour, I can click on manual sync and set the sync direction to inbound, meaning inbound to Sage. Click on sync entity, and that data should now be on its way. So it's at this point querying the Autodesk data, finding the changed record, and then queuing that up to push that down into Sage. So once that process completes, we can go back into Sage Accounts Payable, click on Setup Vendors, and pull up the vendor, and we see that the change has made it into Sage now. Okay, so let's switch back to UCM Connect and move on to the next thing. So next I'd like to jump down to jobs because most everything else on the list uh, does depend on jobs existing. So we're gonna send a job from Sage into Autodesk in this case. 
And my settings have this set to selected records only, meaning that I'm not going to sync every job that's in Sage into Autodesk. I'm going to be selective about which jobs I want to send over. While I'm here, I'll also note just a couple of uh, things in the settings. This is something that we would set up one, one time when you first uh, set up the integration to indicate how to set up the costing structure for those jobs. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and first go into job cost. And the job in question has been already added in Sage. So we'll just take a look at that real quick. And the job that I want to sync over to Autodesk right now is this very last thing called Rock Creek Center. So that was recently added to Sage and I'd like to sync that over to Autodesk now. If I double click and drill into that, I can see the breakdown of all the cost codes uh, as well as all of the uh, categories underneath that and so forth. So that's the data that I want to sync over is the list of cost codes and categories along with their original budget amount. So let's go back to the uh, HH2 site and I'm gonna click on the plus button right here. Okay, and I can see that uh, this particular job has already been synced up from Sage to the HH2 site. It has not gone over to Autodesk again because we've selected the option for selected records only. So until I select that, it doesn't go any further. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that job and accept that. And this, by the way, is something that you would do periodically if you have it set to selected records only, is you would periodically go into this window and add or remove jobs from the list based on what you currently need to have integrated based on either new jobs or jobs that are closing. Okay, so once I've done that, one other step I'll need to do before I can push this on into Autodesk is I will need to set up at least the project record itself in, um, in Autodesk. At a future date, we will allow you to uh, have that project created automatically based on the Sage data but at the current state, uh, you do need to set up the project manually yourself. Okay, so we'll click on Create Project. I will enter the project name. And one thing I'm gonna do here is go back into Job Cost. We'll close out of this inquiry. We'll bring up the Job Setup window. Locate the job in the list. And the reason I came here is I just simply wanted to copy and paste the job name so that it appears in Autodesk exactly the same way that it shows up in Sage. And that, that is a requirement at this point. As well as the job number. The rest of the fields are more Autodesk specific. So we're just going to pick a, pick a job type. and click on Create Project. Okay, we need to make sure that we've enabled the appropriate modules that we plan on using. Okay, so now that the job has been set up, let's go back to the HH2 site. And here we're gonna use the manual sync option simply because the information has already been pushed up from Sage to the HH2 site, but we need to trigger that now to go on into Autodesk. So we'll click on the uh, Sync Entity button for jobs. And that information is now in process on its way into Autodesk. Okay, so once that is finished processing, you can go back into Autodesk and go into cost management and click on budget. And we now see all of the cost codes and categories that came over from Sage. I'll also point out just a couple of things. So notice that the budget code in Autodesk is built from the extra component, the cost code component, 
and the category component all put together as, as one composite code. That is actually defined under the project settings under budget code segments. So when we first sync that project for the first time, the integration will define this budget code structure based on those codes in Sage and based on the settings that I identified earlier that show the, the sizes of each one of those segments. Okay, so that part is complete. So we now have a project with a budget and we can then go ahead and move on to, uh, to the next item in the list. So next I'd like to talk about commitments. And you'll notice that with commitments, we still have the option of outbound or inbound. The typical workflow will likely be to send commitments from Autodesk into Sage. It does support the other direction as well. And in fact, as a, as a, as a one-time push to get current projects up to date, we could flip that the opposite direction. So if you, for example, already had a project in Sage that was in progress with uh, several commitments under it, and you were just now creating that project in Autodesk, you could use this tool to get that project up to date in Autodesk and send over all those commitments from Sage into Autodesk, and then afterwards flip the direction back the other way, uh, and then begin entering and managing all of your commitments in Autodesk and sending them to Sage. So again, the options there are completely up to your company's workflow. So for this example, I am going to use the workflow that would start in Autodesk to create the contract there and then send that over to Sage as a commitment. So to do that, I'll go back into Autodesk and we'll go ahead and create a commitment. So I'm just gonna scroll down to one of my codes here that has uh, some contract on it. And we'll create a new contract for that line item. We'll give it a contract number and a contract name and click create. Okay, so we now see uh, that we have a contract here. If we click on the on the contract, we'll see the details for the contract, such as the name, the description, and so forth. We'll identify the type as a subcontract. We'll pick a supplier. There's no contacts yet for that supplier, so we'll go ahead and add one. Okay, we'll scroll down. And we'll notice for the budget item that I selected, a schedule of values item was automatically added. And this schedule of values could be broken down into additional uh, line items if, if needed. Basically, when we send that data over to Sage, it's going to be the most granular level of that breakdown that we're going to send over to Sage as commitment items. So for now, I'll just leave this as, a, as just one item, basically. And then the, the key for this to flow over to Sage is that the contract must be executed. So at this stage, since it's only in draft mode, we're not going to pick that up yet. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, mark this as having been sent to the subcontractor. And then I'm also going to go ahead and mark this as an executed contract. So at this point, this contract would be picked up by the integration and sent over to Sage. Based on my integration settings back on the configure tab, uh, that would indicate how frequently that data is going to be queried. So right now that is set for one hour. That is the most frequent option right now. So basically every hour, the integration will query whatever is in, in Autodesk that's new or changed and send that over to Sage. Since I don't want to wait for a full hour during this presentation, uh, I'm going to go ahead and click on the manual sync tab and click on sync entity. And so that will query the data right now and look for anything that's new or changed and 
and queue that up and send it over to Sage. Once that is finished processing, we can go into job cost and see the commitment there in much the same way as if it was manually entered in Sage. So at this point, I'd like to go ahead and create a subcontract change order in Autodesk and send that from Autodesk into Sage as well. So let's switch back over to Autodesk. We'll click on change order. And the process of creating a subcontract change order begins with creating a potential change order. So I'll click on add. And we'll add a cost item under it. I'll identify the budget code that it belongs with. I'll scroll down. I'll identify the cost for it. And we'll go ahead and set this record as open and generate a subcontract change order. Indicate the amount that we're committing to it and generate. So now we have a subcontract change order that's been entered. The status is still draft. In order for the integration to pick this up and send that over to Sage, it will need to have a status of executed. And now just like the original subcontract, this would be picked up automatically whenever the integration runs next, which right now is set hourly. And again, instead of waiting for an hour to, for that to, uh, to come up, I'm going to go back to UCM Connect and click on Manual Sync and click on Sync Entity for Commitment Change Order. Once that is finished processing, then we can go back to Sage Job Cost. Click on Tasks, Commitment COs, enter the commitment number, click List, and we can see that the change order is now in Sage. Next, I'd like to show an example of entering a subcontractor payment application in Autodesk and then sending that over to Sage Accounts Payable as an invoice. So we'll go back to Autodesk. We'll click on Cost, go to Cost Payment Applications, click Create, and select our contract. Click on Create Payment Application. And I'm going to keep this very simple just by entering an amount for the total work completed. And in order for the integration to pick up this invoice and send it over to Sage, it does need to be an approved invoice. So I'm just going to take that through the workflow cycle right now to do that. Okay, so now that this invoice has been approved, uh, again, this would, this would integrate with Sage automatically uh, once an hour comes up. And so rather than waiting for that, we're going to go back to UCM Connect and click on Sync Entity. So that data is now being processed and is on its way over to Sage. So once that process completes, we can go into Sage Accounts Payable. And we can view the invoice through an invoice inquiry. So if we go to Inquiry, Invoice Register, locate the vendor. And there's the invoice that came from a subcontractor payment application in Autodesk. And we can drill into the invoice as well to see the particular commitment and uh, job cost coding that was applied as well. So lastly, I would like to talk about the new feature that will be released soon that will allow you to transfer detailed cost transactions from Sage to Autodesk. So first off, let's take a look in job cost at the specific data that we'll be looking at. So I have a custom inquiry right here that looks at 
cost transactions for a given job. So I'll select my job. And what I'm seeing here is cost entries that have originated from various applications within Sage 300, such as payroll, accounts payable, job cost, equipment module. So any place in Sage 300 that can generate cost on the job, that's where these transactions originate from. You'll notice that these transactions are pretty detailed. They identify the transaction date and other details about the transaction, including, for example, uh, like the vendor, invoice numbers, things of that nature. Uh, you'll notice that there's also payroll transactions here. Now, depending on how your Sage 300 software has been set up, you may or may not see employee level detail. So for example, you could set up Sage 300 in such a way that when payroll is posted to the job, that payroll cost is posted in summary like we see here. But you could also set up Sage 300 in such a way that when the payroll costs are posted to the job, uh, we would see employee details. And so these rows, instead of saying update summary, would show the actual employee IDs and employee names, and the descriptions of these transactions would include the employee names. So if that were to be the case, when we transfer that data to Autodesk, we don't want to see employee level details because we would be potentially sharing employee information such as pay rates. So instead, what will happen is when the integration passes detailed cost entries from Sage to Autodesk, if we detect any transactions that, in that include payroll data, the descriptions will be replaced with simply uh, something generic like labor summary. And so no employee information will be shared. Let's take a look at where that data will show up in Autodesk. So if we go back to Autodesk, and we're within the cost area still. And we'll go to the expenses tab. And so this is where we would expect to see those detailed cost transactions show up in Autodesk is essentially for every transaction that we saw on the inquiry in the previous screen, we would see entries sh showing up in this window uh, reflecting those cost entries. And then of course, those cost entries are going to accumulate up to cost totals that we would see within the budget or actual cost. So that concludes everything that we've planned to cover during this presentation, but let's go back and do a quick recap. So first off, we created a vendor in Sage and sent that from Sage to Autodesk. We then edited that vendor and sent that edit back to Sage. We then created a job in Sage, along with all of its cost codes and categories and original estimate, created the same project in Autodesk, and then we use the integration to populate all of the budget codes and budget amounts in Autodesk. We then created a commitment in Autodesk, specifically a subcontract, and sent that to Sage. We then entered a subcontract change order in Autodesk and sent that to Sage. We then created a subcontractor pay application and sent that over to Sage as an accounts payable invoice to be paid. And then lastly, we talked about the detailed cost transactions that's pending to be released. Obviously, there are a number of other data flows that we did not cover during this presentation. In a number of these cases, the data can be exchanged in the, in the other direction. Uh, there are also other data entities that we did not cover, as well as some other data entities that we will be releasing soon. All right, that was a pretty phenomenal overview and really appreciate uh, Michael and the, the wider HH2 team putting that demo together for us. Um, we're gonna move into the Q&A portion um, of today's presentation, make sure we get some of the questions that have popped up answered. Um, we also wanted to leave uh, a poll question up um, for folks that would like to hear more about uh, this integration, Autodesk Build, and HH2's integration with Sage 300. All right, so that poll question is up, and while folks are uh, responding to that and the answers are rolling in, um, let's see, Anna, do we have uh, questions that have popped up during the presentation? Yeah, we have a lot. It's been active, Josh. Um, I think I'm gonna group some of these because I see some themes here uh, and hopefully be able to get as many questions answered in uh, as succinctly as possible. Uh, but first and foremost, I saw a lot of questions about licensing, user access. Um, 
So I'll start with uh, Autodesk cost and then I'll ask Michael for HH2. <laughs> Um, but on Autodesk cost, do the subs and the owners uh, also want to be, you know, have access to the platform if they need to submit or view invoices? Uh, and are there any like unique permissions or anything for those users? Yeah, it's it's a really good question. On the Autodesk side, if you want owners and subcontractors to participate on the project with you, then yes, they're going to need a license. Um, but in in that in that sense, we've tried to deliver a couple different models uh, for licensing that really allow our customers to pick and choose how and who they want to support with licenses. So um, you can definitely purchase uh, a number of licenses and allocate those out to appropriate uh, internal and external stakeholders. Um, we can also provide an unlimited pricing model, um, which really gives you, you know, as many licenses as, as you can consume. And then also we're working on a bring your own subscription solution, which allows other Autodesk Construction Cloud customers to leverage their own license so that they're not consuming one necessarily that uh, a subcontractor, general contractor or owner has. So a lot of flexibility there. And then in terms of permissions, you can get pretty granular. So, you know, inside of, let's say, a general contractor, you're going to want your folks to have access to a lot of the tools that we ran through today. Um, flipping that on its head, for external folks, subs or owners potentially, um, we give you the ability to really give them limited access, view only access, or the ability to come in and, and edit things inside of the solution. So you have to be a little careful and work with our customer success team to deploy that uh, exactly how you want it. But yeah, absolutely, Anna, we can be pretty flexible in terms of what licensing looks like, and then how you uh, dedicate those to different different folks on your projects. Thanks. It's, it's good to hear about all the different options so folks can really pick what's right for them. Um, Michael, I'm curious, is there, you know, how many licenses are needed to use HH2 or, you know, what's what's accessing HH2 and setting up the integration like for with you all? Yeah, great question. So, uh, we actually don't control access based on a number of, of users. So you would have a system admin login for the HH2 site. And then with that, you could create additional uh, logins for your site as well, if you needed more, more than one person to be able to uh, access the integration options. Cool. Um, and I'm sure that folks can just engage their Autodesk account rep to kind of figure out how we can all work together and what the pricing would look like to deploy. Um, so I do definitely encourage folks to reach out to their Autodesk account reps. Um, I'm going to move from here. There's a lot of questions about other types of ERP or accounting solutions that might be, you know, that we have integrations that we support integrations with here at Autodesk. Um, so, Josh, I'm going to kind of group these a little bit as well, uh, but I saw a lot of questions about QuickBooks. Um, so, can you briefly speak to any QuickBooks Online, QuickBooks Desktop integrations that we have currently? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, definitely a, a popular solution um, for, for small and medium-sized businesses. So, um, with QuickBooks Online, uh, definitely can support an integration there. Uh, we leverage our ACC Connect tool, um, and really the beauty of that is you get to work with our team uh, and our consultants around what the integration really means for you. Um, in a lot of cases, what we see most folks doing is, is setting up a project, um, but then really just passing their invoices. Now, we can get a whole lot more tailored around what a customer specific needs are with QuickBooks Online, but those tend to be some of the uh, more common workflows that we see between our solution. Uh, QuickBooks, De QuickBooks Desktop, um, is a little bit more limited in terms of what it can do simply because um, their, their APIs aren't necessarily available on a lot of the different iPaaS providers that are out there in the market. Now, if you're looking to move a budget out of QuickBooks Online or, or an estimate uh, or invoices, then let's work together on that. Um, we can still leverage uh, the export of data into like a CSV file use ACC Connect to transform that data and then bring it into Autodesk cost management also. So a lot of different options there, um, but you know, QuickBooks Online is one that pops up. Uh, and then you know, I, I saw a question about Computeries also. Um, we're working with Computeries and Dell Tech uh, to figure out what the integration should look like between our solutions. Um, so far, Dell Tech uh, 
is, is working on some APIs that makes the passing of information a little bit easier. And I think that they're looking at some iPaaS providers that are out there to act as the infrastructure to connect them to the outside world. So um, another strong accounting solution and one that we're excited about bridging and integration to. Well, you uh, you took my next question away from me right there. <laughs> Sorry, Anna. <laughs> no worries. Um, and in general, I would say there are um, there there was a slide earlier in the presentation where we showed a few other logos, but there are uh, a handful of other solutions that we are either currently integrated with or working on integrations with. And so, when in doubt, you know, talk to your Autodesk team, uh, and they'll likely get you on the phone with Josh himself. <laughs> uh, we're happy to happy to support those explorations with you. Um, I have another question for Michael here. Um, for the Sage 300 integration, is this you know on premise cloud versions of Sage, uh, both, neither? Just help us understand kind of what's supported here. Yeah, great question. So um, when you say cloud-based uh, Sage 300, uh, my assumption is what you're actually talking about is is Sage 300 being uh, hosted uh, on hosted servers and uh, we can definitely support that. We have customers who use our, our solutions now that are on a hosted environment with Sage 300. Uh, the key is simply that the hosting provider uh, needs to allow us to install our synchronization client uh, on that Sage server. So as long as that's accessible and we can do that, then uh, there'd be no problem with, with supporting a, a hosted version of Sage. Perfect, thank you. And it's also supported on-prem, um, and I, you know, I think that still that's probably more the common uh, implementation of Sage, where there's a server sitting in a closet somewhere on site that probably people haven't looked at and has a lot of cobwebs on it, um, but kind of a similar process, right, Michael, where the sync client is installed, um, it talks directly to the server that a, a customer may have on site, and then again, uh, the sync client and UCM facilitate the information up to the cloud where uh, Autodesk Construction Cloud can consume it, and then the reverse order, right? Take it from cost management, push it into UCM, and bring it down into your local uh, your your local server. Yep, that's right. I've got one more question for you, Josh, and then I think we'll be wrapping up on time here. Um, but if a customer has in-house technical expertise and they want to connect cost management to, you know, an in to an ERP that they're using, that you know, some SQL data platforms or or other things, is there a way that they can explore that with Autodesk? Absolutely, um, and we don't hold back. Uh, unlike some other vendors in the market, we publicly post our API documentation. Uh, you can go to forge.autodesk.com. Uh, and review um, the not only the documentation for cost management, but across our entire platform. Um, so we're very open, uh, and I think that speaks to Autodesk acting as a, a platform company. Um, so yeah, if if you have in-house expertise or third-party developers that you're interested in having build out an integration to your ERP, highly recommend. Again, forge.autodesk.com. Uh, and the documentation should be there. Uh, please reach out to, to my team or to the Forge team. Um, they have a bunch of developer advocates that can uh, either answer your questions or get you pointed in the right direction. Perfect, that makes a lot of sense. Um, any, any closing thoughts for us, Josh? I really appreciate you taking the time to share this information and answer all of our questions. Yeah, for sure. Um, as mentioned, uh, Following today's webinar, we'll send out um, uh, a link uh, to the recording, and we'll also provide a couple additional resources. Um, one is our resource center, uh, full of uh, success stories, tips and tricks, uh, and third-party integrations that we support. Uh, definitely want to hit the HH2 website. Uh, they've got a section on their website carved out specifically for Autodesk Construction Cloud and our integration. Uh, and then also want to pump our digital digital builder uh, blog and podcast. Um, it, it, that's a great uh, um, uh, forum for customer feedback um, and also meeting with uh, various Autodesk stakeholders. So um, again, those will go out in an email and uh, Anna, thanks for, uh, for hosting and, and emceeing today's presentation. Thank you and thanks, Michael. Thanks, Michael.